When owning a motorhome, one of the things we want to do is not to have to spend a whole lot of money to maintain them. And the only way you're going to do that is by maintaining it yourself. So today I want to talk to you about a problem I'm having and the troubleshooting involved and what I did to repair it myself, which saved thousands of dollars. As my batteries would wear down, the auto gen start would kick the generator on when we got to a certain voltage drop. And as the generator kicks on, it will show you your load on the load meter here. The problem was I would see a load and then it would disappear and I couldn't get the generator power to take over. As an example, we'll start this. Now as the generator fires up, we'll see the load coming from the generator on the load meter. Hey, there I have a load of zero. Now as it warms up, it should start showing an amp load and that should start charging the batteries. So now you can see the amp load is increasing and you can see the DC volts increasing up to 14 volts, showing that I am charging my batteries at this point in time. Now the problem I was having is when I would kick on the generator, this would kick up and show volts and then it would black out and go blank. I wasn't getting any power from the generator. And I did somewhat of a jerry rig fix and I'll show you what I did to fix it. But first I had to find out what that problem was. So as troubleshooting process would lead, hey, let's go check the breaker on the generator. looking at my generator breaker right here it shows that it's on so that's not my problem well the next spot we can come down to investigate is your automatic transfer switch so what this automatic transfer switch does is switches from shore power to generator power to inverter power one of the recommendations is never start your generator while you're plugged into shore power. If this transfer switch is messed up, it may be intermittent or not transferring power at all. Let's pull this cover off and take a look. So if you have your coach plugged in to 30 or 50 amp service, unplug it. Next, come in here and shut off the power. Make sure there's no power to your coach or your RV. So this is the load panel, the generator, and the shore power. Now as we come down, these are my switching units. Can you see something different about one switching unit from the other? Such as this contact right here, it looks a little burnt. And you'll notice this foamy area right here. Well that is five minute epoxy. So when I came out here, this was all loose and this is why it wouldn't kick over. So as an interim fix until I got a new switch, I was able to five minute epoxy this and now it kicks over and it works just fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set up the camera. I'm going to fire up the generator so you can watch this kick over. Alright, so now you should have been able to see that kick on, and then when I shut the generator off, you should have seen it release. Now this is working right now because I did an interim fix. So these automatic transfer switches, as you can see, somehow it overloaded and burned up, and you can buy these switches independently. And if you do, you're going to have to drill out these rivets and change them, and they're about 60 to 80 bucks a piece. 
However, they're really hard to find. So, I ended up buying a whole new transfer switch box. Now this costs $200. Now you can see, here's my old cover. However, it does say right here that it is an LPT50 BRD. And the new one I ordered is an LPT50 BRD. However, you can see the size difference. They're not the same. This is a newer version. When I open it up, there's my two automatic transfer switches, and there's everything for generator load panel shore, and this right here is the timer. When we look back up in here, you can see there's the timer. That's a 20 second timer that allows the generator to come up to speed before we transfer everything over. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We had twelve slots. On the new style, we only have nine slots. So <clears throat> that tells me I have three for shore power, three for generator, and three for load. If you don't feel comfortable with this task, you can always hire it out, and you already did save a few hundred bucks in troubleshooting costs by figuring this out yourself.